Hello and thanks for joining us for the new season of Encore after a big summer break. And what better way to kick off the new season than with a star of one of France's most prestigious cultural institutions. Today's guest is a principal dancer at the Paris Opera, Hugo Marchand. Bonjour, Hugo Marchand. Hello. It's a pleasure to have you here. Now, it seems everyone in France takes the month of August off. Do the world's top dancers get holidays well? Yes, we have to stop. We have to rest. We have to be able to take uh, the pressure down to be able to come back for the new season. Well, you're known for your unique dancing style that mixes strength and grace. You were named principal dancer at the Paris Opera when you were only 23 in um, 2017, the company's highest rank. And you're with us today to talk about a personal project, though, and your association, Hugo Marchand pour la danse. Tell us more about it and why you created it. Well, it's a non-profit organization that I created last September. For me, the whole idea was to be able to share, to spread dance, contemporary dance, but also ballet, all over France. Uh, most of the most uh, uh, theatres that we have in, are in the big cities, like Paris, Bordeaux, Toulouse, Nantes, but uh, there are also many places in France where dance is not present. And I wanted to allow the French people to discover dance and to do that in uh, places of heritage places of history and to create a link with architecture. So the whole idea is to have uh, play, uh, tickets at 13 euros, which uh, allow people to pay for it. Uh, for me, it's a nice way to give back to the French people paying for the Paris Opera because it's a public theater. Okay, well, one um, of the shows that you're putting on is called Les Etoiles au Chateau. It will be performed on the 9th and 10th of September at the Chateau des de Diguan. Chateau de Diguan in Burgundy, <laughs> yes. In um, Soan et Loire. Let's have a look at what audiences can expect. You've made it your mission um, to get rid of this idea that ballet is strict, elitist, um, inaccessible. Um, you wrote a memoir um, a few years ago and you're very active on social media. Uh, you started dancing at nine. Yeah. Um, you joined the Paris Opera when you were only 13. How did you know that you wanted to be a dancer? I think it's something that was already inside myself. Uh, I think we all have a talent, we all have a gift. Um, and I was very lucky that it uh, bloomed at a very early age, which were nine. Uh, so I felt the urge to begin to dance. Uh, I don't know how it happened, but it did. Uh, and I began at dan uh, dancing uh, when I was an, in Nantes, in the Conservatoire de Nantes. And for four years, I trained there before joining the Paris Opera at the age of 13 at the school. So it's, uh, it's a long road, uh, but uh, it's worth it. And, and did you feel like it's been a lot of sacrifice when all other teenagers were just going to school, going out, having fun? It's a different life, uh, but everything we learn at the school uh, is also more freedom because we get to know our body perfectly and to find ways to express ourselves in different ways. So, of course, there are some sacrifices, but it gives more more ways to give yeah, freedom. So for me, it's not only sacrifices. Now, we'd like to think that there's more equality in dancing, um, but the kids' classes today are still full of little girls wanting to be dancers. I tried to get my son to go, but he was the only boy in the class. Do you think things are changing? We try to make them change, but it's not enough, I think. That's also why I created this organization. I want to show people that ballet is not only for girls, it's, only, it's also for boys. People have been dancing for ages, you know. Uh, when we were in prehistoric uh, era, people were dancing. They were mu making music and then dancing. So dance is for everyone. I don't know why now ballet dance still looks like for an elite and for girls. It's very strange to me. Now you were um, 23 when you were named a danseur étoile for the Paris Opera. Um, you received the honour on stage 
in Tokyo. Um, but when you reach the top of your game at such a young age, um, what's that like? Where do you go from here? It's just a new way opening in front of us. Um, being an étoile at the Paris Opera helps us to have uh, all the most beautiful roles on stage. So for me, to become an étoile wasn't just the end of the, the road. It was just a new beginning, a new beginning to uh, be different characters in ballet, uh, to go on different stages in the world. So it's just a new way, a new change. But uh, for me, it's not the end at all. Tell us about some of the creations that have left a mark on you over the years. Well, I was very lucky to work with William Forsyth uh, when he came at the Paris Opera. I think it was in 2016. Uh, I had an amazing time with him in the studio, creating this ballet, Black Works, on James Black music, which was very modern. Uh, and also, I was very lucky to work with Crystal Pite on a, her new creation for the Paris Opera called Body and Soul. It was just before the pandemic. So we have as well as ballet, modern dance at the Paris Opera, which, which is the, uh, makes the, institu the institution very rich because we are able to go from uh, Sleeping Beauty, very uh, classical, rigorous dance, to very new contemporary dance, which gives us maybe more freedom to express. So, yes, it's very, it's very interesting to work with this company. Now, one of the most recent people to be named um, Dancer Etoile was Guillaume Diop in March. He's the first black dancer to have um, the honour at the Paris Opera. He told uh, France 24 about the responsibility of having such a rank. Of course, I feel a sense of responsibility. I realise what it represents, what it represents for me and what it represents for people that look like me. I'm conscious of the fact that if I had a sort of role model like myself when I started dancing, it would have been easier. Even if there have been black dancers at the opera, none have ever achieved the rank of principal dancer. So it's true, I realize that I do have this sort of responsibility. Hugo, and back in 2021, the Paris Opera admitted following an inquiry that there was a lack of diversity. Um, it made recommendations. Uh, as someone who's entered the Paris Opera um, years ago when you were only 13, are you seeing changes being made? Yes, changes are arriving slowly in the company. Uh, I think it, what is very interesting is to bring the change in at the school because it begins with the school and people, students graduating and being hired in the company. Uh, what I want to remind for Guillaume is that he's, he has been made a while because he's an amazing dancer, talented, uh, hard worker, very good partner when he dances with women. So of course he's a black dancer, but I like to also remind people that he's very gifted. So he's, he has not just been a while because he's a black dancer. I think it's also very good to tell. Um, your next performance um, with the Paris Opera is the ballet Jerome Robbins, yeah. um, <clears throat> which will be on at the Palais Garnier in October. He, of course, is best known for West Side Story. And what do you like about his choreography? I like the jazzy style that he brings. Um, I also like that he always speaks musical uh, um, recordings that are amazing. For instance, I'm going to be able to dance two different pieces. The first is In the Night on the Chopin music, and the other one is En Sol, which is called In G in English, which is on the concerto In G from Ravel with the piano. And these two pieces, the music is incredible and gives us uh, like many images in our mind to dance without telling really a story. It's just being on stage, being, being true, and just let the music being shown actually through the dance. I think he was telling that he wanted to see the music and hear the dance. So for me, it's very interesting to work on this style. Hugo Marchand, you are a role model to young people out there. And it is your mission to communicate with people out there, especially young people and when it comes to dance. What advice would you give to someone watching at home who wants to be a dancer? Um, I would tell him that uh, the desire needs to be inside and strong, true, and that it will take time. Uh, nowadays, things go very fast. We can become a star on Instagram in a few days. And being a ballet dancer is 10 years of work, hard work, but it's worth it. So I would tell them to be patient and to be very rigorous in their work. And put down the phones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
Hugo Marshall, thank you so much. It's thank been you very much. a pleasure to have you. People can see you in um, Jerome Robbins in October and in Yuri Kilian in December, both at Paris's Palais Garnier. We'll leave you with the 20th edition of the Lyon Dance Biennale, which kicks off on the 9th of September for the rest of the month. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I'm Gulliver Crag, France 24's correspondent in Kiev. I'm forever crisscrossing Ukraine, Poland and other countries in the region to keep you up to date with all the news from Central and Eastern Europe. Join me on Live from Paris and in all France 24's news and magazine programmes. Gulliver Crag, one of the 200 France 24 correspondents around the world.